All right, it's time for an outdoor vlogging blitz. No sunglasses, because I only wear sunglasses indoors and at night. So, yesterday there was a vlog from Hippocrit, or Give and Take, one of my favorite YouTubers, uh, about the idea, about the, that good art is the worst art. And he was talking about uh, specifically drawing and like how he hates that he's only good at drawing. He's not great. He doesn't have stuff that like turns people's heads or warrants comment or anything. He's just competent. So his art's not bad enough to be funny, but not good enough to be, uh, you know, to, to draw attention. And it's kind of the worst place to be in, but it's the place that you're in for the longest time as an artist. Now, while I totally agree with him and his sentiment, uh, what I thought his video was going to be about from the title is how good art is also just the first to go. It's the least important art that you will probably follow. Because bad art, mediocre art, will just, you're not going to see it, right? It's, it's people who are starting out, they, they don't have an audience yet. They're still working up to getting to that good level. But the worst thing about good art is that you can build an audience out of it, but a very passive one. You can build an audience of people who kinda sorta care, but not really. It's the kind of situation you're in where maybe you can gain a lot of YouTube subscribers, but not a lot of patrons, or something like that, you know? Like, people will watch you and take in the content because they're bored, and there's a, you know, there's they just need something to look at but they're not going to form a deeper relationship with it and I was thinking about this a lot while I was on the road because of the fact that I didn't have much time for YouTube I spent you know most of my time with other people while I was on this uh, this trip around the the East Coast of the United States I was almost always staying with friends and so I was hanging out with my friends and if they weren't around, I was doing work. So I didn't really have time for YouTube videos. There were only a couple of channels that I actively kept up with. And there was sort of a gradient of which ones I would watch. Like, I would, no matter what, watch anything that was posted by Endless Jess or Best Guy Ever or Hypocrite because those guys are my three favorite YouTubers right now. I think they're doing by far the best work in the game, most interesting stuff. Now, if I have a little bit more time, I might watch stuff from Mumkey Jones, or Casey Neistat, or Red Letter Media, all of whom I really enjoy their content, and, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily, like, require a, a huge amount of time, Red Letter Media sometimes does, but, like, I'm willing to make time for those guys, uh, but, you know, it, only if I really find the time, and then there was tons and tons of channels that I follow that are good, that I will watch when I have the time, but, like, you know, I'm not gonna make time for them, and those ones all end up on the chopping block the second I have anything better to do. If I have work to do, there's no way I'm gonna watch, like, say, uh, like, Deep Cuts or Better Than Food Book Reviews, which are two channels I followed more recently that are, like, pretty good vlog review channels, and they're fine, but, uh, you know, I'm not gonna, like, stop what I'm doing to put on one of their videos or... Like, it just, uh, there's lots and lots of channels I can name like that. Most of what I follow on YouTube is stuff like that. These, these channels that, yeah, if I'm just binging YouTube all day, I'll watch all these guys and I'll enjoy it. But, you know, I'm not going to take time out of my day. And there's only a few channels that, like, can, can survive even that. Like, I will watch most of the Needle Drop videos because even though individually they're not that interesting, I can just throw them on in the background and I just like the sound of Fantano's voice. So, like... I don't necessarily pay full attention to those. That's something that I listen to, like, to decompress or, like, just to have on in the background, which is kind of different. But definitely, like, something like, again, um, Deep Cuts to compare to Fantano because they're both music review channels. I can't just kind of zone out to him. Like, I have to pay enough attention to know what the hell he's talking about. But uh, because of that, I'm not going to watch the video because it's not going to be like so interesting that it's going to keep me engaged. Another guy I'll probably drop everything and watch is uh, Super Bunny Hop. Like most of his videos are interesting enough that I'm going to like get something out of it. But there's so many, so many channels that like it really is just a matter of how much time do I have. And I, I think it's, it's a weird and kind of 
precarious position to be in, to be making stuff that's just kind of good. And I think I kind of fall into this trap myself, that a lot of what I make is not something that you would drop everything and watch. Like, th th that's kind of the difference, I think, between a lot of my main channel and side channel content, is that most of the main channel stuff is, like, meant to be the videos that I expect everybody to be like, oh, he's really, he's talking about something interesting and important enough that he put editing into it, so, like, let's go watch that. Um, but even then, it's not necessarily the case, and, and my audience, you know, different people have totally different priorities with my content, but, like, I'm always afraid that I'm gonna be somebody who you just pass over most of my videos, because there's too many of them, and they're not that interesting, that you're gonna make time for it, you know? I worry that, that if, if enough of my audience is people who just watch stuff when they're bored, or, like, you know, who, who, who uh, let's say you don't have a job right now and you're watching my content because you've just got lots of free time and then as soon as you get a job, am I going to be on the chopping block, you know? I'd put a lot of my own content on the chopping block in that situation because I couldn't watch all the uh, seven hours of every show I dropped when I was on the road. Like, I didn't listen to all of that back and I usually watch all my videos back a couple times. Um, just to make sure I know what I said so that I can participate in the discussion around them. But yeah, like, I'm sure there's some stuff I do that, that people will drop stuff for, and I would totally drop stuff to listen to, like, writing the zeitgeist or something like that. But anyway, you get my point. Good art, good, okay, acceptable art is the first to go. It's the first on the chopping block. And I think that's why we always have to be improving and seeking to make something great you know, something a little bit better. And it, not that it has to be high effort necessarily. You know, I'll watch literally anything that Hippo, Nate, and Jesse put out because I think they're geniuses and they natu they're creative. And even if it's not a super high effort video, they will find a way to make everything they make unique. It won't just be the same shit that I'm getting on everybody else's channel. That's why I will always watch the stuff that they produce. Um, but anyway, you get the point now. Uh, bye.